I'm sure some of you would already be familiar with the term sweatshop, but for those of you who aren't, a sweatshop is a term used to describe a workplace that has extremely low standards and usually underpays workers while having them work for extremely long hours. This is usually large corporations that value low costs over the lives and well-being of their workers, commonly found in the clothing and fashion industry. The history of sweatshops go way back to the 1820s. People worked to make union service coats like this one and other jackets during the Civil War in 1864. When people think of sweatshops and other cruel forms of work, we think, yeah, well, that was in the 19th and 20th century, right? That stuff doesn't happen right now. Well, unfortunately, these practices continue on today as well. Nike and many other brands have been accused of running sweatshops all around the world. For most activists, or at least people that have read on this topic, are aware of this. When people think of sweatshops, they usually think of factories in other parts of the world, like Bangladesh, Cambodia, China, or Ecuador. What if I told you there are sweatshops present in the US? Yep, there are sweatshops in the US where workers are being paid unbelievably low wages, which are illegal. Before we jump into that story, we need to take a deeper look into the history of sweatshops through our modern era and why sweatshops are even being practiced at all. For these refugees, classrooms are a distant memory. 10 hours a day, six days a week, they make jeans. Ali is 12, his younger brother Yazan is 10. We have to work. Our family doesn't have any money. We can't go to school anymore. On the first day I worked one hour. I left. It was too hard. I really want to go back to school because I don't know how to read or write. Let's first look at how bad sweatshops can really get. An article on The Guardian goes into detail in regards to this topic. I'm going to be quoting many articles during this video and all links will be in the description to their original sources. Interviews taken from The Observer and Dan Watch shed light on the conditions of what it was like for workers in Cambodia. Norn Sophia from the Collective Union of Movement of Workers said, mass panic had occurred when one woman suffered a seizure in a factory where temperatures were later found to be reaching 37 degrees Celsius. Workers feared for their lives in one incident when 28 people collapsed, rushing to escape a fire. At a factory supplying Nike, another described panic after thick smoke seeped into a factory supplying Puma. I heard the explosion. Smoke came into the factory. Workers were afraid and panicked. I ran to the gate to get out. It was locked, but I ran to the manager's door. More and more workers came behind. Other workers could not run to get out and I heard they started fainting. It got to the point that workers in factories that produced for Zara, Mango, and Next left hidden messages sewn into the clothing asking for help, hoping that customers would find it and help them fight for their right to get paid. Here are some quotes from workers in factories for Zara, Mango, and Next. One morning we came to work and the firm was gone. The shutters were closed down. Our boss had disappeared. We had no other choice but to start this campaign. We put these tags on garments across every Zara store in every shopping mall across Istanbul. We don't want to harm Zara. That's not what this is about. But we want what is owed to us. Zara responded by creating a hardship fund for workers left unpaid. But I can't help but wonder what would have happened had these workers not pleaded in this very clever way. They literally had to hide messages in the clothing for customers to discover and then ended up getting 280,000 signatures on a petition, which then made Zara and the manufacturing factory pay their workers. It goes without saying that had these workers not taken these drastic steps, they wouldn't have gotten paid. This is a common trend we see among corporations and even the police department at this point. These companies don't take responsibility until they are cornered with either real evidence or, in the case of the police department, undeniable video proof. There were also 500 workers that fainted in factories that supplied to Nike, Puma, and many other brands. These quotes help form a picture of what it's like in terms of conditions in these factories. 
A Southeast Asia Field director for the Worker Rights Consortium, taken from an article on The Guardian, said, There is no proper investment in an adequate working environment and no investment in the living wage. If workers are fainting, it should be a clear indication you need to do something more drastic. Nike has made a statement saying, We take the issue of fainting seriously, as it can be both a social response and an indication of issues within a factory that may require corrective action. All right, so things are trying to be done to fix these issues. But why is this even a practice? Why outsource all your production for clothing when you're a company based in the US, Canada, or the UK? Why don't the companies just produce their products in the country they're based? It's quite simple. It's cheaper to produce in other countries. This practice has been present for years and is still present to this day. There are many justifications given by many corporations and economists that this is actually benefiting these communities. All right, let's take a look at some of their justifications. An economist once said, The misery of being exploited by capitalists is nothing compared to the misery of not being exploited at all. Okay, this point of view truly infuriates me, and I think it's best put by Trisha Stryker at a TED Talk about this topic. But people say, are we not doing them a favor by giving them business and stimulating their economy? Isn't working in a factory at any wage better than the other alternatives available to them? For example, working as a prostitute or selling your child into slavery or leaving your village, your family and your children behind for months on end to work for wickedly low wages and unsafe working conditions. This is not a choice. This is the exploitation of vulnerability Companies are profiting off their need to work. We need to respect these people, treat them like we would treat workers in Australia, because this would not happen in Australia. The idea that we can view someone in a less advantageous situation and think that it's morally justifiable for us to exploit their current situation is beyond me. I do understand the point of view of The Economist, that these countries and workers would starve without these jobs at those factories. But that doesn't mean we get to take advantage of their need to exploit it and maximize production and efficiency. Over the years, the heat has been on these companies from activists and organizations. So things have certainly been changing for the better. That being said, it's fascinating to see corporations devise new techniques to avoid blame in regards to sweatshops. This is a common method utilized by brands to avoid blame. Brands would outsource their production to manufacturing companies in other countries with lower wages and maximized production. In many cases, all well knowing that these conditions might not be to standard, but yet turning a blind eye. Due to scrutiny from inspection organizations and activists, conditions have been raised. But firstly, it shouldn't take protests and large amounts of scrutiny to be a human. Being human meaning not exploiting workers to the point of fainting or in some cases death just to fill your pockets. Secondly, outsourcing manufacturing and claiming to be blame-free is just nothing but intentionally turning a blind eye to inconvenient truths. There has been another horrific incident at a garment factory in Bangladesh. An eight-story building collapsed today, killing at least 145 people and injuring hundreds of others. This just months after a fire killed more than 100 people and put the unsafe working conditions at many factories in the global spotlight. Now there are brands working to improve these conditions, but it's just sad to see how slow movement for change is when there are people suffering and dying so we can wear a new pair of pants. The Times says investigations by the U.S. Department of Labor from 2016 to 2019 found factories in Los Angeles contracted by Fashion Nova. Workers were being paid as little as $2.77 an hour. That is absolutely ridiculous. The state of California's minimum wage is $12 an hour. Now you're probably wondering, how on earth are brands getting away with these crimes? It's simple. They outsource their production and manufacturing and are labeled as retailers and not manufacturers. This simple change in their label as a brand exploits a loophole in the law. The state of California passed a law in 1999, the landmark anti-sweatshop legislation. Persons damaged by failure of a garment manufacturer, jobber, contractor, or subcontractor to pay wages or benefits 
Of course, the one entity that is exempt from paying this is the retailer. So as long as you are the retailer, you outsource all your manufacturing, whether that be in Cambodia, Bangladesh, or the United States, it doesn't matter. The retailer holds no liability and doesn't have to pay the charges. What David Well told the LA Times sums up the situation pretty well. They force the production costs to as low as they want because of their power in the supply chain, with the result of ultimately the workers bearing the whole cost and risk of the system. This whole problem devolves from the retailer. The common feeling among people after finding out about sweatshops and other cruel forms of production is one of two reactions. Either feel bad and then try to escape the feeling by distracting themselves with Netflix, YouTube, or something else. This happens due to the feeling of helplessness and not knowing what to do. So I won't end this video that way, but rather will give you ways in which you can help and avoid being part of this vicious cycle of fast fashion and sweatshops. I leave in the description a link to brands that are against sweatshops and are focused on the safety and treatment of garment workers. So I save you the time of having to do the research yourself. And thanks for watching.